All right, my friends, welcome back. Um, let's see. This week is a test week, yay. So Wednesday through Friday. We will uh, probably get through chapter six, but we won't get into seven or eight. So, uh, and what we get to by the end of lecture on Wednesday will be the limit. But as I said, I think we're going to be done with chapter six by that time. Um, of course, the practice exam, I was intending us to get through chapters seven and eight by this point. So you don't have to do that portion of practice exam two, which is on chapter seven and eight um, until we actually cover chapter seven and eight. Sorry for the adjustment in schedule, but I think it's allowed us to talk about some important things, so that's fine. Uh, all right, so we've been talking about stereochemistry. Ooh, that's kind of interesting. We've got a bug flying around. Uh, anyway, sorry. Uh, we've been talking about stereochemistry. We've defined the term enantiomers for molecules that are stereoisomers but are mirror images of each other. Uh, stereoisomers have the same connectivity but have a different shape. Uh, and we've practiced identifying enantiomers. And if you want to generate an enantiomer, you simply draw the mirror image of a molecule. But then you have to demonstrate that it's not the same thing. Uh, we've also introduced the term chiral. If a molecule is chiral, it will have an enantiomer. Chiral is the adjective for a molecule that is not the same as its mirror image. Uh, we define the term stereocenter, which is an sp3 carbon with four different things attached. Uh, and then we pointed out that if a molecule has one stereocenter, one and only one stereocenter, it must be chiral. If it has two or more stereocenters, it might be chiral, but beware. And uh, I was in the process of disclosing my evil stereochemistry tricks uh, to you as we finished last time. Uh, so I gave you a couple of molecules, and uh, on the left, we began by uh, generating the mirror image of this molecule. We identified that there were two stereocenters on carbons two and three. We drew the mirror image, and then uh, our task was to try to see whether it's the same thing or not. Go ahead. Uh, just a question for exams. Do you allow model kits? Do I allow model kits? Absolutely. Yep. Uh, it's, it's worth some practice ahead of time so that you're not, uh, the model kit doesn't become a source of stress, but yeah. Okay. Others? Right. So uh, we were drawing the mirror image of this molecule, and then to determine whether this molecule is chiral, we need to convince ourselves that either they're the same or different. And so it may be useful to make a model set for this kind of thing. Alternatively, you can develop a couple of tools for manipulating molecules on the page that are useful. Uh, one option, you can see that uh, if we were trying to compare these molecules, the, the carbon chain sort of zigs up here between one and two, whereas it goes uh, down that way. So in order to uh, try to get it into the same orientation, we could do any number of things. Uh, one thing you can try is to do uh, sort of in the plane steering wheel action. So you put the hub of your steering wheel in the center of the molecule and then you turn it 180 degrees. Um, one of the interesting things you find with this molecule is uh, if you do the 180 degree steering wheel action or spin, it looks exactly the same. That's uh, that just it just happens to have that element of symmetry. Any uh, you don't have to know this, but that's called C two symmetry. It's got an axis, and if you rotate it by two pi divided by two radians or 180 degrees, uh, you get the same thing. Uh, nevertheless, that does that gets us no closer to determining whether these two are the same. So one thing we can do is pancake flip the molecule, stick your molecular spatula underneath the molecule and flip it over. In so doing, the carbon here ends up there. And these groups, these OH groups, which were angled out of the page toward us, must now be angled down into the page away from us. You see sort of what we did there? 
Um, now you can compare the carbon chains. They sort of have the same extended orientation. Now you can, if, uh, if you like, move it up and see that we can align the carbon chains, but not the OH groups. Uh, on the molecule on top, they are uh, up, whereas on the molecule on the bottom, they are down. And therefore, we conclude that these two molecules uh, are enantiomers of each other. They are not the same as their mirror images. And so the term we will use is enantiomers. Uh, and because of that, each is chiral. Because each is not the same as its mirror image, they are chiral. So that is an example of a molecule where there are two stereocenters and it is chiral. Okay, uh, then I showed you the one over here and we, we correctly identified that carbons two and three were stereocenters. But I told you I wanted you to determine whether or not that molecule was chiral. All right, what'd you come up with? Okay, it is not. That is the right answer. It is not chiral. But you may not be able to tell that by looking at it. So uh, let's go with the fail-safe option, which is always draw the mirror image. Uh, and then examine if it's the same as its mirror image uh, to determine if it's chiral or not. So uh, the mirror image would look like this. All right. Um, so what can we do here? If we start from there and do the 180 spin we would end up with this, All right? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, which still does not look equal to this. All right. Um, but we could then try the pancake flip. When we do that, this carbon here is going to end up here. Whereas it was down, it must be up. And then the OH group on this carbon <coughs> ends up here and has to be down. And oh look, they're the same thing. Okay, you follow that? So this molecule is the same thing as its mirror image. Therefore, these are not enantiomers. These are just two different views of the same molecule. And because this molecule is the same as its mirror image, it is not chiral. So interestingly, we have learned that a molecule can have two stereocenters and nevertheless be not chiral because it happens to be the same as its mirror image. All right. Um, so see that it's not enough just to draw the mirror image. You have to be good at manipulating the molecule around and changing its shape to see whether it's the same as its mirror image. All right, I wanna show you a shortcut for identifying this situation. And also we need to introduce a new term because um, we've drawn three molecules that are all stereoisomers of each other. You've got this one, you've got, oops, <coughs> excuse me, this one, uh, and then you have this one. Okay, these two are chiral and they are enantiomers of each other. This one is not chiral. Uh, what is the relationship between this molecule and these? They're still stereoisomers of each other, but they're not mirror images. So the word we have for that, the relationship between these two molecules, is diastereomer. Wait, are those two chiral? These two here are chiral. 
because they're not the same as their mirror images. Uh, but the relationship between this molecule and either one of these molecules is diastereomers. So um, diastereomers is a catch-all term for anything that's a stereoisomer but is not an enantiomer. So um, going back up to our chart here where we defined enantiomers, uh, we can just say stereoisomers that are not mirror images. And this will include, <clears throat> say, alkene stereochemistry like uh, E versus Z. In the context of like a cycloalkane, this will include um, these two molecules, cis versus trans. Any, any relationship that is not, uh, where they're stereoisomers but they are not mirror images, we're going to call diastereomers. And the reason we make that distinction is because diastereomers will have different chemical and physical properties. And whereas enantiomers will not. They will have identical chemical and physical properties. Okay, questions so far? Yeah. We call all three isomers like unique compounds. I'm sorry, say that again? So like those three right there, like each of those is a compound even though they're stereo isomers of each other? Each of them is a unique molecule, yes. Be, uh, they are not the same. So they, they have the same connectivity, same groups in the same places, only the shape is different. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just to clarify, so when you say that the molecule that's not chiral, those other two have to be like relative. You can't just say like this molecule is chiral. You have to say it's, this is a... No, good, good question. Chiral is, uh, the, the question is about the term chiral and is it, is it relative? No, chiral is, is an absolute term. A molecule is either chiral or not. Uh, but chiral molecules have enantiomers because they are not the same as their mirror image. Yeah. Um, okay, what else? All right, so uh, this molecule that has stereocenters but is nevertheless not chiral, we have a special term for that has stereocenters but is not chiral because it's the same as its mirror image, we're going to call that a meso compound. I don't know why, but that's the term that has stuck. And um, it's really easy for me to ask questions on an exam about is this molecule chiral or not? Are these two molecules enantiomers of each other or are they the same thing? Uh, and in doing so, uh, it's very easy for me to conceal these meso compounds. Uh, one way you can recognize uh, meso compounds is they have, and this is why they are not chiral, meso compounds will have a plane of symmetry that makes two halves of the molecule identical. That plane of symmetry is not immediately apparent in this molecule, but imagine us rotating around this carbon-carbon bond by about 180 degrees, so we swing this methyl group up and back towards us uh, and then in the plane of the page. So we change the carbon chain like this. Uh, we're keeping carbons one and two in place and three. Uh, we're just rotating about the bond between two and three uh, such that four 
is going to move, that will bring the OH group here. Yeah? Can I show you like, on the... Where the is the, uh... Oh, yes. maybe. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Uh, it, Spartan may or may not have this molecule, so let's delete it. Um, zigzag. There was supposed to be something on the screen. Did, did it die? Uh, did the computer go to sleep? Are we back? Potentially green screen of death. What's going on here? Hmm. I have no idea what just happened. We now have 30% battery, so, man, we better get going. <laughs> um, all right. Stereo markers modify existing bonds. Fine. Um, Come on. Yeah, I did. No, don't. Sorry, I'm, uh, I don't know apparently how to use this app very well. Can't draw in delete mode. Uh, okay. Let's see whether we've, oh, how about that? Uh, so I'm gonna try the various confirmations. Right, so this is the confirmation that I drew on the previous page, right? You've got uh, the carbon chain going in a zigzag and one of the OHs is pointing out towards you and one of them is pointing out away from us, right? Um, let's see if I can get to a higher energy confirmation. Nope. Uh, so this will be maybe the best that we can do. This is on the way to what I was trying to draw. If we bring this methyl group here in the front and rotate it down even further into the page, right? Then both OH groups would be coming out toward us. Um, so what we would draw would be that. Now you can see that this molecule has a plane of symmetry right here bisecting the bond between two and three. And when a molecule has a plane of symmetry, automatically it is, it is identical to its mirror image. Uh, I can draw the mirror image for this molecule and you can see very clearly they're exactly the same. Okay? So, being able to recognize a plane of symmetry in a molecule that has stereocenters is useful to avoiding thinking something that's something is chiral when it's not. Okay. So, shortcuts for identifying chiral molecules. First, look for stereocenters. If it has one and only one stereocenter, it is chiral. If it has more than one stereocenter, it might be chiral. So go to shortcut two and look for planes of symmetry. If a molecule has a plane of symmetry, it's not chiral even, the, even if it has stereocenters. So I thought um, it'd be good to do a little bit of practice and I don't know, maybe try to show you how I can conceal meso compounds, disclose some of my evil tricks. Yes? Okay. You'd, you'd appreciate that, yeah. Okay. Um, in order of dastardliness, hmm. sure. <laughs> uh, in order of dastardliness, let's see. Well, this is sort of level one dastard, dastardy, I don't know if that's a word or not, of concealing meso compounds, drawing them in an orientation where it's not immediately, where the, where the plane of symmetry is not immediately apparent. Um, option two 
is to use the Newman projection. Um, and this is really annoying to people, um, which is why I do it. So I might ask, is that molecule chiral? I might also ask, what is the relationship between these two molecules? Uh, okay. <laughs> so uh, I might draw these two molecules and ask, are they, one, one thing I could do is ask, are they enantiomers? diastereomers, are they the same compound, or are they not even isomers? <laughs> uh, okay, or perhaps not stereoisomers. <laughs> it's difficult for me to see how I could use either of those two options, but sure, let's just make it even more fun. So, uh, what do you do? Well, there's a couple of things you can do. Uh, if you're daring, you can try to stay working in the Newman projection and try to rotate around carbon-carbon bonds until you see what the relationship is, okay? Uh, one of the things that you can note is, are the groups in the, on the back carbon similar to the groups in the front carbon? If that's the case, then you want to be on the lookout for the meso compound. Notice that that's exactly the situation we were in before. Carbon 2 had a methyl group on it and an OH group, as did carbon 3. And so two of the stereoisomers were in antiomers and the other one was a meso compound. So if you've got the same kind of stuff on the front carbon as on the back carbon, there's a chance that you could fall into the meso trap. So to avoid this, one of the things you can do is, uh, I'll show you a couple of strategies. One is to simply uh, rotate around the the carbon-carbon bond, rotate the carbon in front until we bring the two similar groups uh, eclipsed with each other. We're not claiming that uh, this is the, a stable conformation or anything, but uh, it's easier to see uh, things when you, it's easier to make stereochemical decisions when you draw things in the eclipsed conformation. So doing so would bring the proton in the front eclipsed with the chloro in the back and the chloro in the front eclipsed with the proton in the back. Um, do you see what we did there? We simply <coughs> rotated this methyl group in the front to be eclipsed with the methyl group in the back. Right? Okay. So let's uh, do that over here and uh, for the other one. And while we're at it, we just as well take advantage of the position of this methyl group. Do you see how, uh, at least the way we've drawn it, uh, the carbon in the back is the mirror image uh, on the right hand side is the mirror image of the carbon in the back on the left. You see how the methyl group is on, in the back is here uh, and chloro is up and proton is there almost as though we had drawn a mirror plane. We just don't know whether the carbon in the front is also uh, a mirror image of the carbon in the front on the left hand side. So what we're going to do again is um, take the methyl group here in the front and rotate it down to generate the eclipsed conformation. So, oh yeah, let's just, uh, sorry. We do that, the methyl group in the front should be here, chloro should be there, hydrogen should... What happened? The bug flew into the projector? It flew into the, it flew into the screen right there, and then it 
Oh, okay. Sweet. Um, okay, cool. I have I have this fear that when people laugh, they're laughing at me. So I'm just like, yeah. Um, it's actually okay if you laugh at me. I'm, um, I tell my kids, you can laugh at me or with me. I won't be able to tell the difference. So. Okay, let's take a look at that. And what do you see? Are they mirror images of each other? Okay. Uh, so we can tentatively conclude that these are enantiomers of each other and that each one is chiral. Now, uh, you may be uncomfortable working with Newman projections. Uh, so let's let me show you how you can take a Newman projection and draw it in uh, a different view. Is that yeah. Is it okay that the chlorine and the hydrogen are in different sides? Well, I guess because you can just flip it around. Hmm. I guess I didn't understand, but you see it. Yeah, because I saw that the chlorine and the hydrogen. Yeah, sorry. This chlorine going this way is in the front. Okay, no sweat. Um, all right, so let me show you how you can take a Newman projection and sort of draw it as though you're looking at it from the side. Oh, brother. Really should have brought my charger today. This is going to be interesting. Okay, so um, you can start by putting your eyeball in the plane of the page and uh, focus in on the groups that are here. Okay, we're going to focus in uh, on the group that's pointing up in the back and the group that's pointing down in the front or vice versa. And from our perspective, sort of leaning down into the page and looking at that, what we would see is methyl group here and chloro group there. Do you, do you see that? If I'm... Oh, right, sorry. <laughs> if I lean into the page and look, the bond between the carbon in the front and back is going to be right here. The carbon in the front is bonded to a methyl group pointing down. That's right here. The carbon in the back is bonded to a chloro group pointing up. That's going to be right there. Okay. Then we simply fill in uh, on the carbon in the front, which groups are coming out toward us from our new perspective. That would be chloro here and proton there. And then in the back, we would have proton coming out towards us, whoops, and methyl group pointing away from us, okay? Then, to determine whether or not the molecule is chiral, we can rotate around this carbon-carbon bond such that we bring the methyl group into the plane of the page, the methyl group on carbon-3. Uh, on carbon-2, we didn't change that, so chloro should still be coming out towards us. As we bring that methyl group out from behind the page into the page, we're going to rotate this chloro group back into the page. Now it's clear if there were a plane of symmetry, that's where it would be, but there's not. So we could conclude that this molecule is chiral. And we would have to do the same process over here and then demonstrate that they're mirror images, and we could conclude that they're enantiomers. All right, so take-home message is if you're going to work with a Newman projection, get it into an eclipsed confirmation where you can line up the stuff in the front with similar stuff in the back. Uh, alternatively, you can uh, redraw the molecule from the side, and then you can... Uh, See whether, they're, uh, see whether the molecules are mirror images of each other or not. But notice in both of these cases, whether you do it with the Newman projection or with the molecule viewed sort of from overhead, you're moving to recognize whether or not you've got a meso compound. You've got to line up the similar groups on either carbon. 
because that's when it becomes apparent. All right. Any anything you want to ask about that? Low battery. My Mac will sleep soon unless plugged into a power app. Oh my goodness! Do you see? Well, let's see if it's got the. It's an older. Like a Mag Maglock, yeah. Oh, no. Anybody got one of those? Okay, thank you so much. I'm unprepared and I'm going to blame it on my children. <laughs> oh, okay. No. Five points for Gryffindor, thank you. Um, sweet, that will work. Thank you so much. And if it, if it fails, I've got a Okay. Sweet, that will extend my lifetime a little bit more. Adam, my 10-year-old, uses this computer to have screen time on Friday nights, and he drains the battery, but I'm, I'm the irresponsible one for not bringing my charger, so thank you. Uh, all right, where were we? Oh, yeah, anything else on Newman projections? Okay, that's these are these are evil meso tricks which you many people have fallen for before. So just try to avoid them. Um, another trick is to draw the molecule in a way uh, that all, that also makes it difficult to determine stereochemical relationships. So chair conformations of six-membered rings. All right, so here we go. Um, Okay, and again, same sort of question. Are these molecules enantiomers, diastereomers, or the same compound? Another question I could ask is, is it chiral? Um, so there's a couple of things you can do here. Uh, you can stay in the chair conformation, but it's much easier to just view the ring from overhead. Okay, so what I will do is number the atoms of the six-membered ring, and let's see, I will choose one, two, three, four, five, six. I, I number in the same uh, sense, so I'm going clockwise around the ring from one to six. I'm going to do the same here. Carbon one has an up methyl group. Carbon two has an up OH group. Uh, now, I'm going to do the same thing over here, draw a six-membered ring from overhead. I'm going to start numbering with the methyl group, and I'm going to go around the ring again in a clockwise fashion. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, and six. On carbon one, I have an up methyl group. On carbon two, I have an up OH group. Oh, they're actually the same compound. Okay. Now, I don't think you would have said that these are mirror images of each other, because it's pretty clear that they're not, at least the way I've drawn it. But it's possible that you would not have seen that they're the same compound, uh, because over here you've got an uh, axial group. The methyl group is axial over here. It's equatorial. What we've really go ahead. Yeah, one is just the other chair, but also rotated around. Yeah, so this is the chair, and this is the other chair of the same compound. Um, and here's a principle. If two molecules, if, if two, two things that can interchange by rotation around bonds are just the same molecule, especially if that rotation happens rapidly at room temperature. So we can exchange one chair for the other at room temperature. So they're not enantiomers, they're not diastereomers, they're actually the same compound. Yeah? What if like, you did the other chair, but you didn't rotate it, so they were both um, going down into the page? Okay, so 
you want to do this chair, but let's see, equatorial methyl group, axial OH group. Yeah, uh, same sort of thing. Like they would still do the same compound, but yes. if you were to draw the ring, the second drawing, they would just both go down to be switched. They're still going down. They're both, uh, when we switch the chair, the up substituents stay up. It's just they go from axial to equatorial. Yep. Um, all right. Go ahead. Do we always assume free rotation around a single carbon bond? Do you always assume free rotation around <coughs> single bonds? Yes. Uh, with in a, within a ring, understand that the only two conformations are the chair ones. Yeah. And up stays up and down stays down. But other than that, you're good. Um, is this molecule chiral? You say a no because I drew two things and they were the same, but but this is a di the different question I'm asking. Is this molecule chiral? Is the question we're asking is does it have an enantiomer? These two are clearly not enantiomers. Wouldn't it be no because the mirror image you could just spin it? Well, let's see about that. Okay, so uh, our shortcut for is it chiral is identify the stereocenters. There's one here, there's another there. All right. So it's got at least one. With two or more, it might be chiral, but we have to check. So again, seeing that the whether or not the molecule is chiral, you want to draw the mirror image. And then you, oops, then you want to start manipulating things to see whether it can be the same or not. So... Let's do uh, steering wheel action to see uh, if we can line up the groups. We can have uh, the methyl group up and the OH group up, but we can't have them in the same place. Okay. So uh, alternatively, we can try um, to pancake flip the molecule in, from... Sorry, that's a terrible, terrible spatula, but sometimes we make sacrifices in the interests of time. Anyway, so we could flip it over, and that would bring the OH group here to the right-hand side of the methyl group, but now they're going to be down instead of up. So not the same. Not the same as its mirror image. Therefore, the molecule is chiral. Okay. Uh, some other, so one principle for chair conformations is just draw them from looking from above, and it'll be a lot easier to see the stereochemical relationships. It's a little bit trickier to do that in the chair conformation. Um, And again, I don't know that this is that troubling, but if I had drawn this and then asked you what's the relationship between these two, what would you say? Are they the same? Different? Same diastereomers or enantiomers? They are diastereomers. How can you tell? Uh, well, if you draw them from, if you draw this one from above, methyl would be down and OH would be up. Uh, this molecule and this molecule are uh, still stereoisomers. They got the same connectivity, but they're not enantiomers. They're not mirror images of each other. Um, one shortcut you can take when trying to distinguish between enantiomers and diastereomers is to take a look at the configuration of each and every stereocenter. Uh, so notice that enantiomers I'm going to use the color purple for a stereocenter that has uh, a substituent coming out toward us. Notice that, uh, and I'm going to use uh, orange for the substituent going away from us. Notice that enantiomers have the opposite stereochemical configuration at both stereocenters. 
right? Do you see how they're both up on one side, they're both down on the other? Uh, in contrast, diastereomers will have different stereochemical configuration at at least one stereocenter, but not all. Okay, so notice that it's only the methyl group that changes. This stereocenter remains the same. So diastereomers will have different stereochemical configuration at at least one, but not all stereocenters. So that's one way you can recognize them. Though, that shortcut, again, you have to beware of meso compounds. That's not an issue here. But if we go back up here, uh, you, you could have been tempted to conclude um, that, sorry, um, We'll use purple for this stereo center and orange for this stereo center. You could have been tempted to conclude that uh, you actually did switch stereochemistry. Um, what's the way to do this? Uh, if we had done our pancake flip in another direction, slid it under and flipped it over from this perspective, we would have generated this compound, which would look for all the world like we had switched stereochemistry here and there. Do you see how it looks like there in antiomers because we've switched stereochemistry? The reason it's not is because in this molecule, carbons one and four are equal to each other. The molecule has that plane of symmetry. Yeah? Um, I would just love for you to go over that again, like why it's a meso compound, because it's kind of confusing me with one wedge and one dash. Yeah. So if you can't get flip it or steer it, then we'll still have one dash and one wedge, right? Right. Oh, how do you get it to where you can see the plane of symmetry? Um, here, in order to see the plane of symmetry, focus on the methyl groups. You want to line those up with each other. So you can do that a couple of ways. Um, we can do that just in our minds. Uh, but let's see. Try to be as clear as I can. Let's keep carbon one and two. Let's keep that bond in the plane of the page. We're going to rotate around the bond between two and three. Uh, but uh, in doing so, we're going to take carbon four and pull it out of the page, rotate it around, and then bring it back into the page such that the backbone looks like this. One, two, three, four. All right, the OH group on carbon two is in the same position. We haven't changed it. If we rotate around this bond, the OH group, which was pointing downward and out to the bottom of the page, but out towards us, will now be oriented towards the top of the page, but away from us. Uh, another way you can do this is to simply draw the Newman projection. We would start with carbon four here and carbon one here. On carbon one, the OH group would be pointing to our left and the proton would be pointing to our right. On carbon four, uh, the OH, um, sorry, I think I'm getting it wrong. Should we try that again? Let's start with the carbon in the front. Oops. Methyl group here. Uh, if we lean down into the page like that, let's see, OH in the front is coming out this way. Is that, have I got it right now? I'm sorry. Uh, and then in the back, methyl group one should be pointing uh, down. And let's see, as we lean into the page, that OH would be coming out to our right and a proton there. Um, so what we want to do then is take the carbon 
in the front and we want to rotate around the bond between carbons two and three so that the methyl group in the front is eclipsed with the methyl group in the back. So if we do that, that should bring the methyl group here uh, to its clockwise side, we would have a proton, and to its counterclockwise side, we would have an OH group. And we can see that everything in the front is eclipsed with its counterpart in the back. And frankly, now the page itself becomes the plane of symmetry. Carbon, uh, the carbon in the front is a reflection of the carbon in the back through the page. Okay, clear as mud, right? Okay, a follow-up question? Is it okay? Yeah, I did. All right. Um, this may be the kind of thing that you want to spend just a little bit of time with a model set on. Work on um, what you can do is be very systematic, draw the molecule in a certain way, make a model that corresponds to that drawing, then make a rotation in your molecule model, and then draw the molecule again after you've done that rotation, and that can start to help you uh, be able to think through these things on uh, on paper in addition to with the model set. All right, um, I guess one last practice on this idea would be Okay, so I got four different drawings there. Um, label the enantiomers, label the diastereomers, and if there are two of the same compound, cross out one of them that's the same as the other. Also along the way, figure out chiral versus not chiral. In the meantime, my 14-year-old is asking whether he can skip second period because there's no assignment. I just texted him, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Why ask the question when you know what the answer is going to be? <laughs> yeah. Just in case, I see. yeah, that's true. It's probably some elaborate blackmail scheme. He's already asked his mother, and she said no, yeah. and he wants me to say yes. And then, well, Dad said, and if you don't give me this, Dad, I'll tell Mom that you said no. All right. Have you got got anything? Need a few more minutes? That's fine. Got a what? Forgot what the question was. Okay. Can you repeat the question? Okay, you're looking at these four molecules. Tell me chiral versus not chiral. Tell me which, if any, are enantiomers, which, if any, are diastereomers. And if by chance I have drawn the same molecule twice or more than twice, I want you to cross out all the duplicates.
All right, if you're getting close, now take a minute and uh, compare with a neighbor if you if you like or or not. Uh, try to convince if you have raw if you disagree with each other. Try to convince each other that uh, you are right. Don't give up easily. Okay, are we still diametrically opposed? Coming to a consensus? Ish? Yes, some of you? Still? All right, so somebody, somebody want to share what you concluded? Yes, go ahead. Three and four are the same thing. Three and four are the same thing. Curses. Foiled again. Um, how, do, how could you tell? Okay, so you, ah yes, the old pancake flip. And they're the same thing. Okay. I would have gotten away with it too. <laughs> it weren't for you meddling kids and your dog. I have a brother-in-law that can do the Scooby-Doo laugh pretty well. but. <laughs> okay, good. So now what else? Well, you say one and two are... In antiomers, how did you convince yourself that they were in antiomers? They're mirror images, which you could see if you did steering wheel action on that thing, right? To turn it around, and then it would be this, the mirror image. Okay, but then how do you know they're not the same? You you did an infinite amount of pancake flipping in your head, and it still did not help you. Yep, good. Uh, another way is once is is just to look and say there is no plane of symmetry. You you can recognize by virtue of the fact that uh, the you you can there is a plane of symmetry here, and this is the meso compound, right? You can see the possibility for that because you have the same kinds of groups attached to both of these carbons one and two. Nevertheless, there is no plane of symmetry there, and therefore, yeah, it has to they have to be in antiomers. Okay, sorry, I'm giving away some stuff. Uh, who's chiral and who's not? One and two are chiral. Three, why am I writing chair? I meant chiral. Ch chiral, good luck, yeah. This is not chiral. Uh, you got to be careful with that. People will use the term achiral. But then I worry that you're going to hear this is a chiral molecule. So I typically say not chiral, but you may hear some. You have to listen carefully because someone will say which is which of these is an a chiral molecule. I also try to avoid a chiral on the t on the exam because if I mess up and put chiral for a and b is a chiral, then people say a chiral in their mind when they select option a, and then everybody's confused. So, um, all right, in antiomers, what's the relationship between this one and either of these two? Diastereomers, and you know that because they are stereoisomers, but not in antiomers. So uh, I thought this is dumb and 
but I'm still going to do it. So let's see, audio display, audio control. How do I get... I'm trying to figure out how I get the it to listen through the USB. Master volume, HDMI cable. Okay, I'm going to see if this works. Um, this is something that uh, Dr. Savage told me years ago that he shares with his students. So I will 